Good morning, everybody. I'm Paul Lisnick. And I'm Tamad Bradley. Welcome to WGN TV Political Report. Hey, we start this morning in Chicago, where a pair of former political rivals have come together to condemn the actions of more than a dozen police officers. In an unusual news conference this week, Congressman Bobby Rush and Mayor Lori Lightfoot said surveillance video showed officers making popcorn, drinking coffee, and sleeping inside the congressman's Southside campaign office while neighboring businesses were being looted during weekend protests. They did not care about what was happening to business people, to the, this city. They didn't care. They absolutely didn't care. Actions of these officers, the deplorable lack of responsibility to do their job at a time when the city and their fellow officers needed them most. Their conduct will confirm the perception that too many people on the south and the west side were left to fend for themselves. Mayor Lightfoot has herself been criticized for protecting downtown over the south and west sides during the protests. Chicago police say the incident is still being investigated, but Lightfoot had said the officers will be held accountable. And in Washington this week, President Donald Trump says he'll sign an executive order on police reform. But the White House is still short on details. As the world reels from the death of George Floyd and protests continue to fill the streets, lawmakers from both parties grapple with how to move forward. Floyd's brother made an emotional plea for change on the federal level. I'm here to ask you to make it stop. Stop the pain. Stop us from being tired. George called for help and he was ignored. Please listen to the call I'm making to you now. House Democrats are pushing a sweeping bill that would ban chokeholds, implement new training, create a national police misconduct registry. Senate Republicans slated to announce their own proposal this week. Illinois Congressman Roger Krishnamurthy represents the 8th District, covering parts of Chicago's northwestern suburbs. And he's joining us today from Capitol Hill. Congressman Krishnamurthy, welcome to the show. Good to see you. Hey, welcome. Uh to uh, my office in Schaumburg, actually. I well, hey, Schaumburg, it's beautiful there, too, this nice time to of year. Nice to have you in the state. <laughs> hey, hey, look, uh, let's, let's focus in right on, on racial tensions. The House, of course, taking steps to introduce the justice in policing legislation, addressing reform. You know, it's also going around various states now. Talk a little bit, a little bit about what exactly it's going to do and accomplish. And secondly, will it just get added to the pile of over 400 bills sitting on Mitch McConnell's desk? I hope not, and, and I'm somewhat heartened that even in the Senate, they're, they're talking about some police reform measures. So hopefully we'll actually take action. But what this piece of legislation does is um, it helps to, uh, for instance, end uh, the chokehold that we saw in the murder of George Floyd. It ends the no-knock warrants. I remember a no-knock warrant led to Breonna Taylor's death uh, in Louisville by the police. Um, it also calls for um, heightened training as well as standards uh, for uh, police accountability. Um, I'm trying to push one particular measure, which is transparency with regard to police payouts by cities uh, and transparency as to the misconduct involved in those payouts. You know, in uh, Chicago alone, we've paid out uh, 700, more than $700 million in settlements for police misconduct cases in the last decade or more. So um, this is very serious and these dollars could go toward investing in those neighborhoods that have suffered tremendous disinvestment, which to me leads to chronic poverty, hopelessness, and of course crime, and we've got to end that. Congressman, are you seeing support among your Republican colleagues to change the qualified immunity standard that protects police? Um, unfortunately, I'm not seeing uh, that support yet. Um, that is something that I am supporting uh, as part of this bill that I'm co-sponsoring uh, that Nancy Pelosi rolled out the other day. However, um, we have to convince our colleagues and others that, you know, nobody should be absolutely immune from uh, misconduct, certainly as egregious as what we saw on display with the George Floyd killing but in so many other instances as well. 
You know, that incident in Lafayette Park, uh, you were one of 120 uh, of your colleagues as well, sending a letter to Attorney General Barr saying you want an explanation for exactly what happened there because the media says it was a peaceful protest. Barr says no, it wasn't. And there were several officers of some sort wearing no identification there. Any response from Barr yet? And do you expect one? We have not received a response yet. And actually, um, with regard to that letter, um, it was uh, me and Senator Booker and uh, Kamala Harris and uh, Congressman Jeffries. And we sent that letter because one of my staff actually went to the protest and took pictures of these unidentified officers. And um, it flies completely in the face of the need for accountability and transparency, which is what, in part, these protests are all about. Not only that, but it could lead to some people impersonating officers and, you know, using the opportunity to um, engage in brutality themselves. So this is a very serious issue and we're going to continue to demand answers and uh, stay tuned. We're going to be pressing this uh, very shortly again. And speaking of the battle between the president and the military, uh, there's now this push to uh, rename some of the the army bases that are named after Confederate officers. Do you think uh, this is the right time to take up that fight? Oh, it's absolutely the right time. It's it's past time. Um, you know, the president, for some reason, uh, believes that it's appropriate to maintain these names. Um, fortunately, already within the Senate, um, they have launched a commission uh, and within the military have launched an effort to remove these names. So uh, I'm glad that they are kind of bucking um, what is otherwise a very strange statement by the president. Um, you know, in the Capitol, we still have statues of Confederate soldiers. Um, and we even have a statue of Jefferson Davis, um, who obviously was the president of the Confederacy and who committed treason against the United States. Now, we have uh, initiated an effort to remove those statues. I hope that my colleagues will be supportive. Uh, again, it's past time. They have no place in the Capitol. You know, let me follow up on Taman's question because it's not just the changing the bases. You've got NASCAR saying no Confederate flags can be shown anymore. You've got Roger Goodell of, of the NFL uh, commissioner saying, you know, we didn't handle this whole thing well. Is there a change in the country going on? And, and maybe the, maybe people being in their homes for the last several months uh, are having a different experience with things than they did because we've heard these kind of things before. Yes, I, I sense an inflection point. I sense that um, a broad swath of people um, are awakening not only here, but internationally as well to the notion that we finally have to tackle systemic racism. Uh, we really have to live up to um, our, our um, motto, e pluribus unum, uh, you know, which is uh, we all are in this together. And we also have to promote equality, which is really at the heart of our democracy. Um, and so um, I, I think that even people in the suburbs are concerned about what's happening in the city. That's why they have protested as well. I spoke at one of these protests last Sunday. Um, I'm really seeing a change in uh, people's willingness to tolerate what we've seen up till now any longer. All right, Congressman, don't minimize us or close out of this <laughs> meeting on your computer because we're going to take our first break and coming up next on WGN TV Political Report. With all eyes on the growing unrest across America, officials try to shift attention and resources back to the ongoing pandemic. And we're going to finish our conversation with Congressman Krishnamurthy. And later. And I'm not going to run away. And especially at this moment, it's important to express ourselves. A group of state senators pressed Governor Pritzker to reopen Illinois sooner. Why some say the governor's participation in recent protests goes against his own advice. Stay with us.